everyone, Sean here, and so many of you are coming to me in the off-season. We just started our off-season training here at the Royal Quebec, and the first thing they have is, why am I not hitting this as far as I should? I'm hitting my irons a certain distance, my fairway woods, I'm hitting my three wood almost as far as my driver. Well, this is an amazing video for you. You don't want to miss it. Let's get to it. Now, there are two things, two major things that are going to prevent you from uh, achieving your potential with the driver. One is being too careful. You got the longest club in the bag and it's sitting on a tee and it's far away from you and you're going, oh my gosh, I don't want to put it in the water. I don't want to put it out of bounds. And then you get tight. As soon as you get tight and you, and you try to steer your driver down the fairway, well, you can kiss your distance goodbye. It's not going to work. You have to swing freely. Same with, hey, I want to make sure I hit this driver far. So you're tight and you want to get your distance. So as you get to the top of the backswing, you jump on it and strain and pop a rib in the process. Well, the more strain you put into your driver, the more you will destroy the timing of your golf swing. And the timing is, well, backswing, transition into the forward leg to get the ground, use the ground to get the body out of the way so we can release out there into the direction that we want to start the ball. That's the proper timing. So how do we go about it then? Stay with us. We're going to tell you right now. First exercise is understanding how the arms swing versus the body turn. Very easy exercise. Put your club on the ground, bend forward, let your arms hang in front of you. Get your left arm out of the way or your lead arm out of the way. Lift the trail arm up, let it fall towards the target, not just fall. I'm letting the arm fall toward the target. So fall towards the target. The brain's got to go get the ground, use the ground to get my body out of the way to give my arm access to the target. Same thing in the backswing. Let the arm fall into the backswing. So when I perform this back and through without stopping with the driver, a super interesting thing happens. Here's my arm swinging back and through, out of the way, out of the way. And as my arms begin to track, my brain taps into that and says, wow, we really have to get the body out of the way to allow the arms to continue to track. So what's going to happen as you allow the arms to continue to track, you're going to see a blur down here. So for all of you who have wandering eyes and you're following your golf club and getting dizzy as a fart in a mitt, you need to keep your eyes down here and you need to see the blur appear in front of you and you'll notice it's got a beautiful arc shape. So as I perform that down here, out of the way, out of the way, let the arms pass, let the arms pass. You notice how my arms are swinging free from the body and now I can see where the club is passing when I'm allowing this to happen. So now I bring this to the T. I want to hit a little fade. I'm going to line it up a little left of my intermediate point. I'm already seeing this blur happening. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to allow this blur to flick the top of the T and cause the T to somersault into the screen to the left of the intermediate point. Here we go. It's tracking. It's tracking. So notice how I was able to clip that T beautifully into the direction that I wanted to start. So as I perform this, then I put a ball on the T. I don't look at the ball. I'm looking at the top of the T right here. Yes, this is a long T and I'm very, very comfortable with that because I know what level my club is passing in the air. So now I bring that in, my eyes are on the tee, 
and I can see in my mind the blur screaming through the tip of the T to the left of the intermediate point, and I'm feeling how my body is gliding out of the way of my tracking arms. So I'm already feeling, notice how my club's in the air? I'm already feeling the club tracking, tracking, tracking. So notice the ball started left edge of that line and just stayed cozied up to the left center of that fairway. And man, was that ever fun. You look at the backspin on that, very low, caught it right in the center of that club face. These Cobra low spin drivers are just absolutely fabulous. Let's see another individual here that really requires accuracy from his swing and it's Munashi Masawi. He's 74th in the world of long drive out of over 220 guys. So he's really moving up in the world. And then we're gonna give you number nine in the world of women's you know, long drive, Savannah Meyer Clement. Munashi, thanks for coming and being on our video and helping us out, man. I really appreciate it. No problem. You man. like his logo right there? The the great Canadian Sasquatch. <laughs> Gotta love it, man. It's so beautiful. And he's got that on his, uh, on his net return as well. They put you a custom logo on your net return. Yeah, that was very really nice of them. Thanks to True Links Wear. That's it. Yeah. So we're then, gonna be talking about perpetual motion drill. It's, yeah. it's a staple in what we do in Wisdom and Golf. And so, you know, if you look at what Andrew Huberman is prescribing mm -hmm. for accelerated learning in yeah. motor skill, right? Yeah. Uh, he talks about open loop and closed loop. That's open right. loop skill and closed loop skill. Yeah. So when we're doing perpetual motion, it's the same as a swimmer. When you're doing a, a swimming stroke and you're, you're feeling that pull of the water on every time that you go through it, um, it's, it's something that you can adjust on the fly. Right. So he talks about making the most reps per unit time. And it's not about the 10,000 hours. It's about cool. doing the most amount of quality reps in a certain amount of time. And that perpetual motion drill is massive for that. For sure. And so we do perpetual motion to acquire the skill or monitor the skill or perfect the for skill. Sure. Yeah. And then we do open loop. Yeah. So that's a closed loop skill. Open loop skill is like darts. You send a dart to the board, you get immediate feedback. And then that way, when you take the next dart, you're already adjusting for the next one, right? The brain's already adjusting for you. Mm -hmm. And you want to leave the thinking process completely out of that. You're just reacting to your targets. That's golf people, right? So you need a good mix of both in order to become a really complete golfer as quickly as possible. For sure. Yeah. And so our premium channel, you're going to see at wisdomandgolfpremium.com, we just started a winter off-season training series that works along exactly those lines. We start with perpetual motion, then we move into using perpetual motion to deliver our task, and then we put a ball in the way of perpetual motion delivering the task, right? So it's really, really cool. Yeah. So Moo is going to be doing perpetual motion right here next to this ball on a tee. That's a pretty long tee, dude. Yeah, it is, yeah. And so as he's doing it, you're going to see where his club is passing. And you'll be able to determine on your end, as well as Moo on his end, where the bottom of that blur is. Yeah. And uh, we'll do like Bubba Watson. I'll call an intensity for you. Okay. So next one is going to be smooth drive down the middle. So that's your playing mode, right? Yeah. And that's your uh, regular length driver for Yeah, this for is playing? a 45 inch, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Next intensity is when Mu is really working on his speed. So spectacular. <laughs> so that's a different level of it, yeah. That's, yeah, that's a different level. Yeah. So now that we have the, you know, so you know, like we, we call it the Moo Scooch. It's, mm -hmm. it's a staple here at Wisdom and Golf. Yeah. And all of our students are talking about, hey, I'm doing the Moo Scooch and it really works, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> so Moo's going to do is going to go through one of his routines mm -hmm. and he's going to show you how he's going to deliver a shot in long drive. Right. I'll get the lights. Low point was good? Yeah. This one should be good. That one, that one should be good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> wow. That is incredible. Now let's look at what Sav brings to the table. You're gonna love this. Um, she's going to be showing you the walking drill, which is another version of our uh, closed loop training. Okay? You don't want to miss it. Before we start with Sav, a quick shout out to Yang Shin, who has this amazing product. We've had this since day one. Was it been eight years since I've been using this product? It's called the Swing Caddy from Swing Impact. And if you look at, it's got a nice bend in the shaft. It's got a really good length so you can train indoors and it's got a little magnetic chamber at the end here. So you'll hear Sav perform a little swing there. I started you at 80 miles an hour just to, to get you going there, Sav. Yeah. This instrument was instrumental in getting Sav the planted seed for her to go compete in long drive. Yeah. It's because of this tool, yeah. right? At one point we were doing our thing, doing a nice little video and she had that in her hands and it was at 110 where I usually have it. And then she goes, and it wouldn't click. She got pissed, mm -hmm. right? And she started going at it. And then all of a sudden the legs engaged mm -hmm. and you heard the click at 110 miles an hour. I'll put it at 110, see if I can click it. Okay. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Isn't that something? <laughs> now watch this swing in slow motion and you'll see how she just gunned those legs in there. And that's the freedom that we're, you know, you, we're going to be explaining in future videos. So you really want to subscribe to our channel and the, that magnetic chamber, you need the G force to do it. If you steer that thing, it's not going to click for you at all. But if you turn it open, you start abandoning control and then you start clicking it, it does something to the brain, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And then the brain starts to engage the legs because the, the tip of this thing is pretty heavy. Yeah. It's got a nice heft to it. Yeah. So it, it gives you a really good sensation of the G forces in the swing. So without further ado, let's get with Sav. So Sav just finished her season ninth in the world long drive standings, made a couple of professional checks this year. <laughs> How about them apples, right? That's got to feel good. So um, she has, I mean, in day one of the world championships, you filled up the grid. The last two at bats you had mm -hmm. were like six out of six in the grid. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Yes, it was at 299. You know, your longest was there. So it was 295 to 299, so consistent. And that's all that grid could give up to you, yeah. right? But you had a 338 in the ski in a more consistent setting, yeah. you know? And, and as you get into more consistent settings, you do a lot better. And the, and the grid in, in uh, Denver was at 360. You yeah, had it up there, 358. We can call it 360, <laughs> come on, right? What's two yards? <laughs> So Sav's going to show you a perpetual motion drill walking style, right? So it's called the walking drill. And as she starts with her perpetual motion drill right here, she's going to see where the club is passing. And then the brain is going to be able to predict how far you can step. So notice I've set up the tees here about one club head width apart. And so she's got room to go back and, and then step through. And you'll notice when she's stepping, it's a very accurate step to that. So what we're looking for is the arm club unit tracking, like I demonstrated at the beginning of the video. And when gravity is doing its job and the brain sees where that's passing, it can now anticipate and predict how to put the tip of the T in the way of that. That's how you do it. 
it's not like perpetual motion, let it track and then go to the ball and make sure I hit the ball. That defeats the whole purpose, right? So off you go, Sav, let's see it. Did you hear that? That was, that was pure accuracy. On these tees, it's very soft here, but the top is firm. Yeah. You flick the top of that perfectly on every one, yeah. right? That's pretty gosh darn good. <laughs> so now what we do is we take that, we'll see that perpetual motion here, and we'll bring it to the golf ball. Wow. How did that feel? Oh man, look at that. There's a 305 yard drive. <laughs>